All right. So <clears throat> let's come back then. So we look at a program where we can drag, right? So we can just write an application to drag the text, right? Just take set X and get the location of your mouse by on mouse drag. You can experiment the rest like on mouse click and then other events that you can experiment to on like release, mouse release, things like that. So we talk about key events, mouse event. You can experiment with different keys too. You can pretty much just insert an image and you try to move like could be a, the avatar, right? Of the game characters and then you can move that around. You can create like someone make a puzzle and move out the puzzle, things like that. Maybe that should be some of the tests, huh? No? <laughs> huh? No? A puzzle? Yeah, like a puzzle? Like uh, they call it a mess, I would say, not puzzle, sorry, mess, right? And then just start to end, move the object out. All right, so let's talk about one good thing that we need to learn in Java Vec is we, I've been talking about observable, observable list. All right, so so what is the observable list? Remember when we add all like pin dot get children, right? We actually get the observable list. So we talk about observable objects, listener for observable object. So it's pretty much a list. It's pretty much just like list, like array list, right? But this is a list of objects, right? So instead of the observable, we know as observable object, which has at listener, right? Now, it's just an event hello again, right? Like this one, it's just listen, right? At listener instead of at like set on action, right? So the parameters is pretty much just in validation listener, right? So the listener class must implement the invalidation listener interface right so on action we have to uh, the class implements event handler right so this one just implement in validation listener right and then in let me make sure we understand again like we were talking about implements event handler here right and then you have to implement handle right yeah, right so this is just another one like you have to implement in validation listener because at listener need that just like on action need we do on action on action what does it need what does on action need we add on action set on action even handler right so that's why I need to make a class to implement even handler right so this one is the same like set on action but it's called at listener right so now the interface is going to be in validation listener instead of event handler. Make sense? So listener class must implement in validation listener. That's the same concept, right? But just different name, right? And it must override the interface 
like override the method name invalidated, right? The other one is what well, the method name handle and we have event as the parameter, right? This one that's override invalidated and observable is the parameter. Right, so that's the method for handle handling the value change. Once the value is changed in the observable object. Right, before it's pretty much just look at event click, right? Now, if the value chain on the observable object, then it's going to handle. So, the one going to handle pretty much just write the method, how do you want to handle in the invalidated, how you implement it. Okay. So, let's look at it says every binding probably is an instant of observable. Let's look at this example. So binding property, if you remember, we were talking about property last class, right? Like we have object has the property, like this is called double property. We were looking at the binding on the circle. If you remember that, right? When we draw a shape and we get the property X and property Y, right? So that those are the binding. We talk about the binding. We talk about the same concept here, binding here. So this one pretty much just gonna be a binding like you add the listener right and it's going to buy to like the property balance so balance double property just like x property y property right for the circle now this is double itself we have double we have integer those have the property too so like if you remember let's review Example before then you remember what we're talking about here. Okay, let's review So we said the double property the value can be changed to All right, so this is all around binding Here right the circle and hmm, biting actually in chapter 14 that we already in so but let's review first to make sure we understand what I'm talking about here so This top of pain. I'm looking for a shape, right? Okay, let me go back. It should be.
probably biting right there, 14.5. Okay. So the biting like dot bind, this is the center X property and center Y property, right? Which we also said is the same thing as when you get to the number, like double property here that we were talking about, double property. Right, so when you do dot by, like meaning that D1 is depending on D2, let's reboot this part. Okay. So let's put in the code then. And we don't need to look at next time. So let's look at the binding demo. So this could be just simple public, right? We didn't talk about the interface, right? Public statics void main. We didn't talk about the GUI, right? We just talk about the new classes like double property from JavaFX. Right, so we we'll call like double one equals to new, like the way that you declare what the way that you declare instead of normally you're gonna do double, but you actually can use double property instead of double. Okay, so new simple double property, right? Okay. So meaning that you can add events to right to this changes to like if you see it's try to see you can make what happen when you buy and buy you see you can add listener to it to the to like before when we have primitive data type like double you cannot make listening listener to the change of the values, right, of the number. But now, when you have double property, you can make changes. And the change to the values, pretty much, you handle the same way, right? Like, how you want to add handle, you implement it here, right? So, that's pretty much new thing, right? New. So, now, Let's just get to this uh, basic first. Like basic, like we have the method, like this are uh, the method, right? For that class, like you can do by set add divine. All right, what we gotta look at, we gotta do bind, meaning that this double one is gonna bind to double two. So if there's a change, right? So let's say double one. Now double one, if you try to get the values, okay? And then let's see what the value of it. Let's print out. Like double one dot get, that's the method, right? Get value. D one value. All right, so let's do the same double D two value, right? So it'd be zero because we didn't keep the value, right? So this is an object, so let's make the chain a little bit. So both of them are zero at this point, right? So double one by two, double two. So let's changing values to double two, right? Double two dot set value to 10.2. All right, let's try that. So now when we run this, D1 is zero, D2 is 10.2. Now, can you can you guess what happened to D1 at this point? 
So if I print this, what's the value of D1 now? They are binding, so let's go change whenever double to change. So we update the other values. So which this method is going to be very useful, right? When you make change one value, the other one will be affected. Before we never have that, right? We have to write old code to do that, right? <coughs> so that's the concept of binding here. Now, <coughs> We learn the listener, right? So So I'm gonna go back to where we left out at listener. So this gonna talk about listeners. We've been talking about listener for observable. Now the same thing, right? Double property right there. Okay. We could add the listener to it too. Like we were saying like dot, right? Dot set values, dot by, right? Right, so we can do by, we understand that, set values, we understand that. We could make a listener to it too. We can add, just like the same concept, like set on action, right, to the button. But now we make that to the double values, right, to add the listener. Now, we have to follow the concept, right, so... The concept is you need to what implement this interface, right? New invalidation listener, right? Wonder can we use lambda? Observable. Yeah, same thing. Now the only thing that we this is this is called anonymous, right? Anonymous in the class, you do new invalidation listener. You have to implement invalidated. The only thing that we concern is what observable, right? Parameter, right? Then we totally just use lambda observable and lambda instead, right? Just like e lambda, right? And then we probably, probably whatever happens, we just going to let it handle in there, right? Whatever happened to the balance? Like, let's see. Like double one, we add listener to double one, right? <clears throat> So I create object double one, add listener to it. Okay, so before, okay. So let's say how you want to handle. Let me just do a load box around here. All right, so we could get the value right in here, right? So we gonna make something. D uh, D one. Has been changed. Right.
the new D when value is double one dot they have double value too it's like get value right so double value returns the value of the optional number value as a double if not double it's going to cast it for you get value pretty much just return the current value it's the same thing but this is just to make sure it's also double value if it's not double after it's changed right so that's why you need that so let's run this like you may see double only buy and have a listener right and the original value is going to be as zero right so original value print as zero all right after this print as zero okay that's an error at this point So the at listener has been added. Let me try without calling set value to D two. To double two. Okay, so it works fine. All right, so it seems like you can't do the buy on that side. Like I was trying to see if I make changes on double two, since double one buy to double two, then it should pop up, right? The value change looks like didn't like that let me, before we go to that let's see if we can just chain double one directly first right set value so we gotta set the value of double one to 101 okay Why do I do set? Because it's bound, that's why it cannot be set. So let's see if I'm not doing it by can be set. Oh, the error is not that. I tried to use JavaFX and this is not JavaFX code. I didn't do right. So the problem is the uh, yeah, I cannot do that. Uh, let's just use the I mean I could technically do that if I make extends applications. Okay. Now let's just use show message. Use the option pane. Show message dialog. Okay, let's let's try that. There you go. 
right? When you set, it make change, so that's why it's pop up, right? Let's see, like if you don't do anything, if you never change D1, then it will never pop up, right? Because it's less than two D1 change. Now let's try, we go to say, since D1 is binding to D double two, let's try. If I change double two, is it's going to change to double one and pop it up, right? So like, There you go, same thing, it should work, right? So now, something changed on D2 since D1 binding to D2 is also affecting this one. Listen there. So, something that new that we can use, okay? So that's the basic like listener, right? Listen to the change. All right. So now let's look at how do we apply this whole thing, right? So this is just making a display resizable clock. So we can create pane. Pretty much clock pane is being implemented from the previous, from the chapter 14 display clock, right? Uh, we can do get hours, get minute, get seconds. So, what we can do, if you see, we can this premise technically just create a label, create a pin, right? And show the clock. Now we want the pin the width property at the listeners All right so clock set width then it's dependent on the width of the get width clearly when we try to adjust this it should update right the clock width and height just like what we tried to do with the triangle last time we really can use the ad listener to help. Like when you do change the size of the pin, it will affect the object size. Right? By set that. So let's. Let's look at this code. Okay. So let's see. We're going to go to displayclock.java. Okay. And then we're going to look at display resizable clock. Okay. And see how this program runs. Uh, let's see, we may be able to find code online. Then we don't have to type from scratch. Oh, this is very good. This is just a GitHub to the source code from the textbook. Very good idea, huh? 
that should be a good resource. So I'll put it for you under course documents under the textbook itself. Okay, you can access to the textbook source code from that GitHub. Okay. Then when you test the code, you don't have to write from scratch. Now we were looking at 14. Fourteen dot twenty. Let's see, if we have that. Mm. Fourteen, fifteen dot eleven. There you go. Fourteen twenty. Mm. <laughs> I was looking for twenty, they have eighteen and then skip twenty. Fifteen eleven. Fifteen. We have fifteen eleven. Okay, so this is the source code. Let me try this. I'll show you how to clone. I I wonder if I can just clone the whole. Right, copy this. <clears throat> Instead of uh, copy code one by one, I can just get the whole thing, right? If I can So we go to form version control, right? GitHub, right? And so this is where we want where we want to put it to two or one clone. So it's doing all the work. All right. Now The code that we need should be there. Right, there you go. So we get our source code here. So we're looking at chapter exercise right, 15. Which one are we looking at again? 1511. So fifteen eleven. There you go. So we need to set up SDK in order to run. This is the same one. Maybe we have different edition, huh?
So I was looking for that. It seemed like the order of the exercise is not matching. Could be different editions. Let me check. Ten edition here. So what's the edition on our textbook here? Hmm? Ten. Hmm. Should be matching, right? Fifteen ten. No fifteen ten. All right, seem like, but I think we can search through the project. Mm -hmm. We can search through the project to find the keyword, and we want to find observable property demo. Mm. The way they name the class is not the same as the way they name it here, right? We can. Yeah, because it's, they didn't name display resizable clock, they named listing exercise 15.11. Alright. So, you can search, find, we gotta try to see if we can find. You can set we want to search like I try to search throughout the project, right? That's a key on IntelliJ idea to like you can search and try to find this keyword. Because there's so many classes and file here, right? Find usages. Okay, find pad. So it's actually matching two different class exercises. That's why it, there is a code, but the name doesn't match. Okay. Now, let's see if we can run this application. So this is the JavaFX application. So we have the library already, JDK. Now what we need is what? Public statics boy main string. The reason we need this because we are not running on the console. Otherwise, we don't have to put this, the launch, because we using IntelliJ. We have to add this for job effects. Okay, if you run on the console, you don't need this. You can just do Java C and Java, and then you can run this code. Okay, 
second. Now, let me see the project. We cannot run. We could run this one. Let's run through that then. So what I'm gonna do, I'm copy path, right? Um pretty much I just gonna use console or terminal. If you use uh, Windows and or oh, this is the Unix right command. So just CZ to that path. Copy the path. No such files or directory. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Need to know the location where you at. Okay. So we gotta go into this location, CD chain directory, right? No such file. Okay, I'm gonna do path by path then. Desktop. O four N. Intro, and then. Exercise fifteen. Oh nine. All right. So when you run, you can do Java. Exercise. There you go. So. Fifteen dash oh nine. Now I'm looking at the code now. What happened? So it show white screen, right? All right, the code looks fine. Maybe something wrong with that file. Start, set on key, primary state dot show, set the scene.
it just does not recognize the way that we can run. What we can do, I mean, I just try not to copy and paste, create a new project. I try to, the way it's structured because it's folder and subfolders. So that's probably why the compiler could not find location. Sources. Exercise 15. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to not spend time too much on this, create a new one then. So we're going to create a class name exercise 1607. Okay. New class. Exercise sixteen oh seven. All right, so now it's depending on clock pane. All right, so we need to find a clock pane class to run this one. All right, so we're going to go to to search for clock pin so we go to edit find find in path right so these are the location where this is a constructor for that so we're looking for this one All right clock in so that's the class that we need hmm, it's actually under clock plane dot java right clock you could click here it's kind of create a class for you to like alt enter create a class so we just do the default all right now let's run that So this pretty much is, it just keep, you see, we were talking about binding right here, right? For that chapter that we were trying to do last time, right? For a triangle binding. So technically, if you ask listener, you could do that, right? Dividing now. So let's look at the code real quick. Okay. So that's I don't want to type it because it's very long. So that's why I try to just show by try to search for the code. So extends pain. So pretty much this is a class to support like make a pain, right? Like this guy pretty much is going to create a clock pain right there, right? Has hour minutes seconds. Let me see. This is hour minutes seconds, right? All 
All right, so this is a JavaFX start application. And this is just uh, the, the size like of this price to be like three, right? Set prefer like this is text field. TF stand for text field. Like I said, they, you know we abbreviate it, right? Then you know the object. <clears throat> Set the size to be three, right? Column count, align center. Set the text value, right? By just do clock dot get hour. Like if I say the hour is eight, so I just make the change to the clock, right? The hour, like eight o'clock, zero minute, zero second, enter. So key event listener. So you just move, set up the clock, right? So if you link this code to the system timer, you pretty much just make the clock. It's going to keep ticking, ticking, and update, right, in real time, right? Maybe something like this you can do for the test too. <clears throat> and you have an access to our resources. Right. Okay, you just need to modify or things like that. <clears throat> like I said, I didn't get finalized what I want you to implement yet. You get it by this. Uh, I try to see if I can get today or tomorrow. Okay. Then you can start implementing do next friday right so but now you have the link to the all the code on the textbook that should be able to help you too right and how to get a code all right so <clears throat> we talk about this is better just add them to the pane right we talk about hbox vbox the bottom right part Vertical box, the top. <clears throat> so it's just put the tab. Let's go back a little bit. So horizontal box, pretty much just your your box right right here, right? This is horizontal box. At the bottom, you add the hour, minutes, second. You may see that, right? It say here hour, minutes, seconds, and yeah, this is the horizontal box right here. And now, <clears throat> vertical box. You just add the clock itself. Clock is the on the top because you add it first. Pretty much as the pane, right? So you add the top pane and the bottom pane. So that's why you have clock on the top and the bottom one, right? <clears throat> All right. So now this one we just learned today. On key listener, right? So it just go and go to set the clock after you hit the key, right? So <clears throat> this has set the clock, set hour, minute, seconds. That's why it just move, right? So it set hour. It's just do the what? Paint clock. So paint clock pretty much is gonna do. Drawing, right? We were talking about drawing here, right? <clears throat> so, drawing depending on with height, this is just do the radius. Now, this is pretty much just math logic now that. We had to look at okay, how do they paint the clock? This is based on the last class we talked talk about how to do it, right? Like this is pretty much just set the size of the clock for the radius, clock radius. But it has to be depending on you can see width and height, so that's why like like that, right? So that's why it just need to be in the math formula, right? Because you can change width and height, right? And center, you keep moving center like with divide by two, pretty much with of the 
of your panel. See that center always change, right? So that's why it's just a little bit something that you have to understand the concept of binding. When you move, it keeps changing, right? With the sizing. Yeah, like this is a, now you create a circle, draw a circle, right? Set the text for the time. This is pretty much just that number 12369. And then the location probably. And this is for the what line. Line pretty much your set stroke to red. Red, red is the second hands, right? Like Let's see, 50, right? So that's the second hand, right? So just draw the line. And this is a minute hand, right? And this is pretty much just use math, right? To move it around the right circles. And just calculate like what time, second, minute. So pretty much just keep pending. Right, but pending is very important here because it depends on the values that change. A lot of values with height, seconds, right, minutes, hour, right. So it keeps changing as update itself. Okay. So you you can walk through the logic real like in details, but this is much just math. I don't want to just spend too much time on how to cal calculate moving like 12 should be going to 360 radius or 90 radius right 12 pointing so this is just convert that it's just math basic math so you should be able to perform that all right so i just want to focus on the coding part all right okay that's how we build it okay I think that's a good one of a good example that's why I want to show. All right, so this is just an animation. Like JavaFX also provide animations like <coughs> oh, I remember you actually could go to see the real application too. Uh, Lian. Animation. This is for the structure part. Let's see what's the Flag rising animation. Okay. Yeah, I think you you can have an access to that. There you go. So this is a source code. All right, so let's look at this one. Fractalizing animation. You know what, I'm gonna create another project, new project. And based on the cloud exercise that we look at, so this one is fifteen point eleven,
so it's called flag rising animation all right so let's look at the output first and then we can look into how we do it so animation first thing is uh, there's a code called I don't have the image so now this is let's do the image view we were talking about that right we just need to create a folder to have that image view so let's create a new folder name image and you probably need just to put the us flag flag so you start jeff just search for image okay so we got put into the location let me copy the path right and then slash us dot diff all right so we gonna run this again So what happened next? US dot GIF G I F image. Let me see, I'm gonna copy it just depends on the location. I'll put it where dot class is. Okay. Let's see what happens. It's just the path. There you go. I just have it so big. Maybe need to let's do the rising, right? I just need to put the size of image smaller, right? What it does is it's moving. So the moving part is coming from this guy. So this is the same thing we talk about how to add the image, right? Now this is it. Only that live code, right? Three of them. That make it happens to we call path transition, meaning you make it rise, right? So we make it rise up the uh, duration. So let's see, this is in millisecond, right? Meaning what? This is one second, right? Every one second, every two seconds. So this is the path from the bottom up, right? Let's say this is coordinates, right? Start from where? Start X. So let's say I was changing it to 800 height. So start from, this is X, right? Y should be 800, right? Start from, it was, it was actually to the left of the screen. So let's move it, right? Let's see 250 start pretty much the point coordinates right to from the bottom right to the top right and this should be the same right because it's x is straight right but if you want to move like vertically or diagonally then x could be different right x and y See, so you just control that. It's faster because that, right? Reduce number. Okay. So 
we just set the cycle count like set cycle let's say one and then start to play if you don't play it's not going to do animated okay it's just moving the object right only one no repeat right done so if you wanted to repeat just do a cycle count that makes sense and the rest is the same this is just animation path transition and the object that you want to move just go here right new one like meaning that you could move anything okay not just the image okay all right so that is one of the animation now let's come back to This is this is an animation class that has play, stop, pause, cycle. These are the attributes, right? Auto reverse cycle count rate status. This is path transition that we just look at. Path transition. Okay so these are constructors like we just look at duration right and the path right shape and nodes so this pretty much is another example that you can move you can hide that circle but you can move around a circle right object around a circle just create a circle. So this one is just based on the mouse pressed. Okay. We just see in the flag rising. Now we can do fade transition. Faded like you can make object to disappear and come back, disappear and come back. Okay, so this is pretty much just the class doing it, right? So the class name faded transition, right? So you pass, put the object that you want. So let's see if I can make this flags fading away, right? So, and then come back. So we're going to say fade transition of t equals to new fade transition. Now this is a constructor duration, how long, right? So we can just use the same like duration class, right? And then we can set a milliseconds or in minutes or milliseconds so let's do well maybe three thousand milliseconds and the object that you wanted to fade right image view right let's check the constructor So this one say this is ellipse. Okay, I wonder if we can do with image view. Let me just set later set set node, right? We pretty much just look at the node image view. Okay. 
Now we can start to do pretty much just like set form values like hundred percent to ten percent, right? Set two values from hundred percent to fading out to ten percent. Cycle count like indefinite keep going. Auto reverse true and then play. So animation you always have to do play for sure, right? Otherwise not going to, to run. So now let's set the from set from value so 1.0 100% to set to value 20% and then you can keep it keep looping right set Do uh, cycle count, right? Loop set cycle count. So this one, pretty much you could make it count, but if you want to do indefinite, just do timeline dot, right? Use the class name timeline dot indefinite. All right. So this is just another animation. Right, you can fading in, fading out. See that? It's fading. Right. Okay. If you do reverse, it's just pretty much just go back from 20% back up to 100%. So that's not a bad idea to do set auto reverse to true. Okay. Let me just make it 205. Now we can do like both animation at the same time. You can see that. Right. All right. So that's pretty much about animations. Okay. Go and come back. All right. All right, so timeline, pretty much the class that we use to deal with like, yeah, like I said, uh, indefinite, right? Keep loop indefinite. So we talked about even Heller already around here. So let's look at the timeline so you could create a new timeline class and make a keyframe okay So this one also add the event Heller. So meaning that you can actually jump into into each keyframe. Okay. So when there's an animation, you pretty much look at from the beginning to the end. There's a keyframe, right? This one is set a keyframe to 500. Okay. And then set cycle indefinite. And then animation.play. So when you click the mounts, it's going to get the status. If it's paused, it's going to play. So Meaning that you can control, right? You can control the effect now, right? To make it play or pause or play or pause, right? Right, so you can make it play or you can make it pause, right? So animation is pretty much from the timeline. 
Now let's see how do we link the text cell, right? So text add to the pane, right? This is the text that we want to control. And the event handler, pretty much the one who handle the how to control the text right here. So that's why the timeline actually link to the event, and event has to implement how you want it to do, right? So this program pretty much is animating if you read the code. So when you hit play, it's going to run the event handler. Okay, keyframe that means you're going to finish the whole thing in like half of like 500 milliseconds, right? Half of a second is going to do the whole thing here. Duration. When you click, it's going to jump and check the length of the text if it's not equal to zero. Then it's going to clear the text, pretty much just take it away. Otherwise, just bring it back. So this pretty much just when you play, it's good. It's like make a text blinking, pretty much. Clear it, bring it back. Clear it, bring it back. Make sense? So you could actually integrate into this part too, like play the flag going up. Right, you can add this, yeah, with the button even listener. Okay, I'll, I'll let you explore that. Okay, now this is a cloud animation. This pretty much just this clock going to keep tweaking now according to. We put animation into it. It's keep going infinite, indefinite, right? So clock pane, we already see a clock pane. So it may clock set the current time. So the key is the current time method that's going to get this current time. So now this is the clock that's going to sync to the system, right? Because it's get a current time. Okay, by using the timeline. So the clock pane itself, let's see if it's already implemented on this one or not, because we already have the clock pane. Uh, set, yeah, that's the method set current time. Pretty much just, yeah, it's already seen to the calendar, right? Get of display minutes calendar pretty much just set it to actual calendar here right okay like i'm sure when i run this it looks like the default is going to be today like now we didn't notice that before but i'm sure it's going to be now Right. Right. Yeah, now right. About five twenty. <laughs> right. Five nineteen. Because just get the current time. Now you can add animation back, it's gonna keep tweaking. Which is coming from this source code, right? The animations add a keyframe. Pretty much just the is it make it run for a thousand cycle. Like every second pretty much. <laughs> It's keep moving, tick, 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 right? Get the time, update, event, update, event, update. Make sense? Let's make it happen. So, I think the la this one is just bouncing ball. You can just control the ball. It's keep bounce, bounce, right? Use the timeline, move the ball. Event is the one who handle. Keep moving the ball. I think that's pretty much it, right? For this chapter. Yeah, that's the end. So we can get back to that again next time. All right. Hello.